One time I stand in the toilet area, I can smell yeah, it. It smells horrible. I want to change this house. I cannot no longer stay here. Good morning, guys. Annie's pissed. They found a gas leak outside our window. We've been breathing that gas for the better part of two months, and they kept coming here and saying it wasn't a big deal, but then the crew just came and found that there was a gas leak right outside the front window. We've been breathing that gas every day. I go to the bathroom and everything. It smells like gas. Yeah, so the gas problem is fixed now, which is great, but Annie has uh, kind of had it with all this pollution and the gas and <laughs> I don't know, she's just having a, a difficult go of it. We spent the better part of the day talking about leaving China. I'm planning on starting my world trip on, on April, but she would like to find a potential another place to go. We were considering America or Australia. We have some contacts at either place, but this might be a, a new chapter. It sucks, you know? Something like air pollution could scare you away from a place that you've called home. I'm about to go to uh, the office area, to Starbucks, where I'm gonna meet a guy named Daniel. Daniel has been a big fan of the vlog and he's been trying to chase me down to meet up. And he's kind of excited to meet. I'm excited to meet him. The discussion, at least, uh, presently, it's really a new thought, potentially moving, but the discussion is possibly spending a month in uh, Australia and then another month in the United States and trying to figure out what would be a better fit for her and Eva and, and me as I travel around the world. It's just, you know, it's just unfortunate that uh, the environment around us right now is counter to living a comfortable life. So many other things are cool and nice and great about China, but it's a pretty big one, pollution. Sometimes feelings are heavy, they can carry so much weight. Even though that the gas leak in the house wasn't related to any sort of uh, Chinese air pollution, it kind of kicked Annie into a new gear. Uh, thinking about well, the fact that we were walking around the house kind of confined to the house because the pollution outside was so bad and meanwhile we were being exposed to all these toxins the, the natural gas being leaked into the house uh, she kind of felt like is there any place where I'm gonna be safe and we're all gonna be healthy granted they fixed the the, the leak but it was such a like sort of an epiphany moment that uh, I don't know she's she's very seriously considering getting out of uh, China and so we're gonna have to come to some realizations and discuss some things and figure out what's what's gonna be best as far as that goes the biggest problem with with leaving China for her is, is the fact that uh, her family is here and they're a great help, big help, you know, with Eva. I'm not afraid you don't want to cause me pain, but sometimes we don't get a choice. And ah, he wanted me to bring my Mavic. I totally forgot bringing the Mavic. That was one of the reasons he wanted to meet. Yesterday's video was interesting because it got a really high amount of comments, like a lot of engagement on it, yet the views are really low. I like to do conversational videos, but they're a little bit lacking creativity, one. And two, you gotta have two cameras, because you're doing this all the time, it gets kind of dizzy. But yeah, it's, I always have conversations and I walk away from them and say, man, that would have been a really awesome thing to share with the vlog. But there's also the intrusion of, like yesterday, Andy was really comfortable with me holding the camera. Some people, they just, you know, it would kill the conversation more than, you know, help me capture it. You gotta take a really careful approach to it. How's it going? How are you? Good, 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 good. <laughs> Introduce yourself. 
Hi, my name is Daniel. <laughs> I'm living in Ningbo, <laughs> and I have just met Matt right now. <laughs> Not in the first time, actually. How long were you in Ningbo when you met me? Oh, one week. Just one, one week. week. Yeah. Like he was a he was a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> really? T today you're a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> I was just here in Ningbo, a little bit crazy about so many Chinese things everywhere, just alone. And then I decided to go to the cinema. I was waiting on the line, thinking, oh my God what is going to be this movie about and suddenly I heard a voice back backwards saying hey you're lost a guy and then, then I turned my, my head around and I saw him this guy yeah so well it gave me like a punch extra saying oh someone else here not only me so I went to the movie and maybe I don't know three four months later I saw that man again in a video log and then I said, well, it's the same man. So he's here making these things. <laughs> and I start following him. And well, finally I contact him because we have uh, several common uh, ideas or hobbies. He wants to uh, travel around the world by a motorbike <laughs> and uh, teach Spanish or English or math, math, I'm sorry. He wants to teach math mm -hmm. and for him, that's the driving, something that's in his gut that's saying, I really want to do this thing. But he, like many of us, is nervous. <laughs> we just talked for the better part of an hour and a half, right? Yes. Uh huh. And uh, how do you feel right now? Well, much stronger. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 just, I just was looking for some extra punch to finally make my decision come true. And I think I got it. <laughs> you know, and that, that goes to say something to, to the idea of surrounding yourself with people who have similar passion, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you get caught in a circle of people that are all kind of like, I don't know, living a life maybe you, you're stuck in, mm -hmm. you know? You, you might find yourself always stuck in that circle because nobody around you is kind of pushed through that. Yeah, you know? no doubt. And so, uh, even me, like we just talked for a while and I'm like super excited. I'm totally geeked <laughs> because I could see his, his passion like ignite. And then I'm like kind of excited because we're talking about the trip and traveling and everything. We're going to the office right now. He wants to see the fish tank and I gotta do a couple of things there. But uh, yeah, it's important to like push, push yourself. If you really feel in your gut that you wanna do something that might be weird and risky, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But talking to somebody who's weird and risky <laughs> is good. <laughs> it's necessary. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's necessary. Yeah, definitely. Welcome to my office. Wow, thank you. Yeah, this is the trike. Yeah. There's not a lot of these in the world. Okay, so you steer here. Oh, what is this for? Oh, Steering. Okay. Ah, and then uh, brake is on the other side. That thing I can really sleep. <laughs> right? It's just, okay, this is my stitch today. Just get my, yeah. my blanket over and yeah. sleep. <laughs> have, a, have a nap. No, it's cool, it's cool. Half a year. Half a year? Yeah. We're, we're looking at the fish tank and one of the fish in there, his name is Matt. He's, he's named after me because he explores the tank. He's always around like he is looking at things and, and looking and so me and Annie when we bought him we were like no oh, let's name him Matt but about a half a year ago he disappeared and I looked everywhere for him I couldn't find him and I was like scratching my head because I couldn't find a dried body anywhere he normally yeah, they, they jump do. out you'll, you'll they, find you'll find on the floor you know yeah. a, a crispy critter <laughs> you know I have I have a whole collection of of, of, of my dead fish and uh, so just now, I was looking in the sump, and look who's there! Well, Matt, you're gonna get put back into the top. He's probably, he's probably so sad because all his friends are in there, and he's got no way to communicate. He's been alone in the bottom. A real explorer. A real explorer, right? <laughs> Going where no fish has gone before. And he lived, because in the back there, there's the overflow box. And it's very hard to, he must have jumped into it. I cannot imagine, honestly. And then there's a stack that actually goes up and over and down inside there. Right. So he would have to go and then fall all the way down. Poor guy. Amazing. I was wondering how the, I would uh, make substance to today's vlog. I'm like, a conversation with a friend, which is cool, but you never know what we're gonna talk about, right? It could be really boring. But actually, we had an awesome conversation. We came to the office, he rode the trike, and 
Matt has survived. Yeah, and you found it by, by coincidence. I mean, you just totally coincidence. Him. But you know, I look down there. I know, I know my tank. You know, <laughs> I know if something's different or not cool or weird. Okay, so I'm gonna try and catch him with my hands first. He's pretty, he's pretty quick, but this area is not very big either. So, oh, I got him. I got him. That's Matt. Six line ass, beautiful fish. All right, here you go, buddy. Holy <laughs> moly. Did you get him leaving my hand? Yes, of course. Oh, he's probably so happy. All the other fish are probably like, holy shit, Matt, where have you been? All right, we have finished. I, I, I need to get my flute fixed. Do you guys know I play the flute? Not really well, but anyways. Uh, it was nice to show Daniel my uh, office. All the. All this office I rarely use. Uh, we're gonna head out. It's been really nice that uh, you contacted me. We were supposed to hang out a couple of times. Actually, we were supposed to hang out before Christmas. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, you guys know what happened with me. I had uh, a few things that kind of kept me from uh, only a few. Yeah, yeah, um, business and life and because being a change people reaction. being sick and. You know, just so I postponed it, and then he contacted me just recently. He said, hey, what about that meeting? But he wants to buy a Mavic, and uh, I forgot my Mavic. So we're gonna have to meet again. Next time. Next time, so that he can, uh, he can practice with mine. I think the moment that he practices, he's gonna buy it like the next day. Next day. <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's dangerous exactly. for him to play it. It's like the, the, final, the final step. <laughs> But I think if he gets it, you'll, you'll very much enjoy it, yeah. so. And speaking of Mavic, I spent the day kind of cleaning my uh, submerged Mavic, and uh, I actually was able to get a lot of that corrosion off of it. So who knows? Maybe I can clean it up and replace the motors and the camera. Uh, who knows how much that'll cost, but eh, who knows? You Maybe have I... to develop the version two of the Mavic with DJI. Yeah, 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 I gotta be a consultant, exactly. right? Exactly. Anyways. I'm going to break off with him. He's going to go home, and then I'm going to go home, and he's got dinner ready. We'll go from there. It's been really cool seeing you, and- Of course, thank you so much, man. No problem, no problem, thank you. We'll catch up later, and we'll fly that Mavic. See you guys later. Yeah, that Daniel's an interesting guy. He's, he's got this passion and drive that is kind of newly found since he's uh, moved to China and started teaching. He's kind of like ignited a fire, and he knows the fire is there, but he's afraid to take the the really, really crucial first step. He's got this concept in his head of motorcycle around South America and uh, teaching along the way. And kind of teaching almost for free. And he was wondering how how could he do it in order to survive. And and he was worried about how, um, how, would, it, how would it work? And what if I fail? And you know, all those things that we worry about, everybody does, I worry about it too. Yeah, I know. And he's watched my videos and he's he's built some confidence off of the viewing of my videos. Helped him to see somebody else doing something, you know, kind of risky. So I talked to him a lot about risk and how he told me personally that he's never really had to risk much in his life uh, because he's lived this kind of baseline lifestyle. But in order to really reach the heights and push the limits of life and uh, aggressively, you know, attack life and, and, and really squeeze the most out of it. You've got to risk a lot. You've got to take plunges and you've got to hit some really serious lows. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not all peachy keen like I was telling him, you know, you, you, you're going to have a rough road ahead, but, but as rough as it is, it's worth it because the result is living the life of your dreams. The problem was that he, he, he'd never really talked to somebody in that way, you know, that was, uh, I, I take a lot of risks, you know, in my life and I've been rewarded with a, a rich, a rich experiential uh, life over the last few years, well, more than the last few years, over the last long time. And so for him to hear somebody that has actually done some of the risky uh, moves that he wants to make, it's helpful. If you or anybody listening to this do want to take your life to the next level and do something risky, 
you know, and you're a little bit afraid, the one of the best things that you can do is to find somebody, anybody, that has done something similar. Write them, try to meet with them, you know, reach out to them like he did for me. And uh, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure he's riding his little uh, e-bike back to his, his school where he works and I bet his mind is spinning. He looked at me like, wow, thank you for giving the, uh, this advice. And I look at him like, wow, thank you for allowing me to, to voice my opinion to you because uh, that's ignited a fire inside me too and, and makes me feel excited. Similar to the getting the drone the other day, how that was accomplishing a goal and, and, it, and it was a movement forward in doing something uh, that kind of stokes a fire in you. Talking to people about this kind of stuff stokes a fire in me too, so. I'm really happy we were able to meet today. I went a little long and Annie's cooked already and she's not gonna be very happy that the <laughs> dinner's gonna be a little cold, but uh, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm late for dinner. Annie gave me one pass though. I'm allowed to be late, even though the lamb is cold. I like cold lamb though. Tomorrow is uh, Chinese December 8th. We call it La Ba, La Yue. It's the last month of the Chinese uh, calendar. On La Ba Jie, you have to eat a special rice and you have to put eight different materials and then you have to cook it. Now I'm gonna find, try to find eight different things which I can cook for tomorrow morning breakfast. Okay, let me try to find eight different stuff. First, some Gui uh, Yuan, dragon eye. So very big Hong Zhao. Xiaomi, black rice, that's it, couldn't find my stick rice. Okay, I just wash them, clean it, and now I need to add the water and put it in the, oh the color is beautiful. Some more water, a lot of water. All right, guys, that is the vlog for the day. Annie just recorded some rice things. You've already seen it, obviously, because I've edited it, but I, I haven't seen it, so it'll be interesting. What's that? She has been just the uh, epitome of the perfect child the past couple of days. So quiet, so happy. Anyways, we're going to end it, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Jayo, comment, share, like, dislike. A lot, of, a lot of comments on the last couple of videos. Really interesting. It's pouring into my phone throughout the day, which is very cool. I'll see you tomorrow. Jayo. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. And I say nobody needs